Apple has joined the Blender project right ahead of their big event on Monday. Coincidence? I'm Mike Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you and if you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe to the channel and ring my bell. So yes, Apple has joined the Blender project as a patron member helping to fund the open source project as well as providing technical assistance for the project too. And on day one as a Blender patron, they've already submitted a patch for Blender with metal support for Blender's Cycles, which is one of their rendering engines, which basically means that finally Apple Silicon Macs are able to use their GPUs for Blender rendering instead of using the CPU, which is what they've been doing in the past. So it'll be really interesting to see how the M1 performs with that enabled, but I can't help thinking the timing isn't an accident. Given that we'll be having new Macs next week with two to four times the number of GPU cores becoming available in the MacBook Pro M1X and probably the M1X Mac Mini, and maybe the 24-inch iMac with M1X and... I don't know, maybe a massive iMac, who knows? We certainly don't. That just means that these Macs will be ready to go with all the performance in the world if you are a 3D artist. Now the performance on those will also be pretty awesome, I guess, and I'd love to see Apple do some comparison renders against the competition actually as part of the keynote, which is what they used to do quite a lot in the past, where Steve Jobs and quite often Phil Schiller would have a, a PowerPC Mac up against an Intel Mac on the stage, like racing to do a list of Photoshop tasks, for example. Three, two, one, go. All right. We so we're loading up the images. It's bringing a lot of graphic files in. And it's starting to do a number of actions like transforms, moves and copies, advanced filters, the Calcium thinking. blurs. The Penian's thinking. It's working. It is working as fast as it can. We're doing gradients. Really, it's the same file and the same actions. This is the kind of stuff that a lot of our customers do many, many, many times a day. And if they can save a few seconds on each iteration, it amounts to an hour or two a day. Remember, this was like the early 2000s. But our favorite render boy, Apple Tomorrow, has said this of the update. macOS has, almost since the beginning, been a less important supported platform of Blender 3D. This was partly due to the fact that Apple used proprietary technology like Metal for 3D graphics, and partly because Apple weren't a patron in the Blender Development Fund. With yesterday's news, the landscape has changed dramatically, and 3D users on the Mac are going to be able to work faster and more efficiently than ever. So I'm excited to hopefully see some Blender stuff coming out, maybe even just Blender benchmarks at the event. Also, we'd mentioned EVE Online adding Apple Silicon support for their test server in terms of Mac gaming, and in the past couple of days, it's been added to the main server, making it a part of the full release. And look how pretty it is. Now, this is running in full screen 4K, high on every setting, of course, downscaled and compressed uh, for you guys now for YouTube. But I think you'll agree that the eight cores in the M1 GPU is not struggling with this at all. These new bits of support right ahead of the event makes me think maybe we're in for a treat with these new toys. And next up, it is time to have a quick last look around the office because that end of it is going to be changing a lot in the next couple of days. I'll just pick you up off the sticks. That's probably the best way of doing it. So this is the way that the office looks right now. It is a bit of a mess because there's boxes everywhere and there's stuff going on and the desk is a bit messy. And uh, this is the stuff that I really kind of hate, um, which is... Like, I don't have any flat surfaces in this office because this is kind of where all the services come into the house. The ceiling is only half painted. That's the boiler. That's, you know, all pipe work and stuff. So this pipe work is probably going to have to stay. But all of this stuff with the electrical um, entrances and the gas meter up there, that's all going to be boxed in. I think we're going to take down this IKEA unit above the doors. That's why it's empty right now. Um, that's probably either going to go into the shed. There's a bit more storage out there. Maybe I can keep some stuff out there. But I've got pegboards to go on the wall for um, cable management. I've got uh, the new standing desk coming, which is the, the desktop is over there. That's from FlexiSpot, um, who have kindly sent that over, which is kind of what's prompted this uh, refit of the office. So I'm really going to try and cable manage that. So there's like two cables coming off the back of it that is basically carrying power and Ethernet. And then everything else will be built into the desk, attached to the desk, pretty much. The top screen is going to be on the wall, I think. That's the plan. But this is going to start getting torn down today. I might post some little updates over the weekend. Uh, so keep your eyes open for that. Might do some of shorts, but we will see. But I just wanted to give you a last look. Probably going to repaint this wall as well. 
uh, this area will probably stay pretty much as it is because I only did it a week ago. So it's going to be exciting. It's going to make it a lot easier. We'll be doing the live stream hopefully on Monday from the new desk area. I'll get that scheduled today. We'll be doing a live stream straight after the event finishes. We'll assume it's going to take an hour as usual. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be great. Don't know where I'm going to be pre, uh, pre-show. pre We will do a big roundup of all of the stuff that we know about M1X, or at least that we think we know, on Monday lunchtime, as usual. And then we'll have the event, and then we'll do a live stream, and we can chat, and it'll be good. So, let's get into some of your iCave answers. First up, Alan B. Unboxings and News asks iCave answers, hey, do you think that Apple is going to announce at this Unleashed event the Apple Car, Apple Glasses, MacBook Pros, Mac Minis, Mac Pros, AirPods 3, and the M1X Apple TV 7th generation? Yeah, no, I don't think they're going to release all of that stuff. No, I think we're looking basically at probably AirPods 3, probably or almost definitely MacBook Pros. If we don't get them, it's going to be just the weirdest thing ever. Uh, AirPods 3 are rapidly becoming the new AirTags, where we just assume they're coming at every event. Um, Mac Mini is probably, I would say, about 70%, 75% certain. iMacs of any sort, probably around about 25 to 50, uh, 25% probably, um, that we will get some sort of iMac, whether it's a bigger one or a 24-inch with an M1X. Um, the rest of that stuff, don't think so. Uh, I don't think there's any new Apple TV on the way. That would be very surprising, but also not impossible. Musk of Alchek asks, IK Vances, hashtag trick question, do you think Apple could ever build a drop-in leg for the Pro iMac, thus provide VESA-only mount for Pro XDR display styles? That's interesting. Uh, the idea of basically having the same port on the back as the Pro Display XDR so that you could choose whether you wanted a VESA mount or uh, a stand, that would be an interesting uh, idea. Hopefully the stand would be a lot cheaper. Maybe we could make it out of wood or something just to keep the costs down. Um, I don't think they will. But I kind of like the idea. Also from Marcin Kowalczyk, IK Vance's double take. Any trusted VESA mounts that anchor to the desk that won't just sag over time and could handle the Pro iMac that you'd recommend personally. Yes, I've had enough of hunching in front of my 2012 iMac turned monitor. Um, I don't know, to be honest. I've got an Elived. That's the one that I found on Amazon and it was like £28. So I um, don't know if it's going to be any good or not. And I'm going to put a 4K TV on it that's 40 inches in size. So watch this space. That's going to be exciting. Janos Weimer asks, IK Vances, a question about the M1X. I've heard a lot of rumours. 10 cores, 12 cores or option for 16. The one I heard the most in the last month was 10 cores, 2 efficiency and 8 performance. But I wondered if it isn't cheaper to stay with the M1 and add 4 performance cores or more. So it would be 4 efficiency and 8 performance, even on the upgraded model if there is one, 4 efficiency and 12 performance. It just doesn't make sense to me to even reduce the number of efficiency cores. I mean, yes, you don't really need them, but if you've got them available it must be cheaper hope that makes sense especially as i don't know anything about chip manufacturing okay so this is a completely separate die it's not an m1x that they've bolted extra cores onto uh, this is a completely separate die and the reason that you would take out bits that you don't need necessarily is that the more space that your die takes up on the silicon a the more silicon you're using therefore the less chips you will get per wafer of silicon uh, which means that your cost goes up but also if you've got more chip there that you don't need you've got more space to have errors on it which means that you're going to get a lower yield potentially there's more chance of getting an error so i think the reason they've done it as well is because they do want to scale i, I really don't think there's going to be any 16 or 12 core chips it's just going to be that 10 core that we've heard about the, the eight performance and two efficiency cores plus the 16 or 32 core gpu uh, options on it so that might be where you were maybe getting a little bit confused on that Perhaps that we're only going to see the one version of this chip just with the 16 or 32 uh, core GPU. And the reason that they've chopped down the efficiency cores is a they've probably seen the M1 that they're not being utilized as much as they expected or they don't need as many of them there. And also that when they then scale and put multiple of these M1X SOCs together for something like a iMac Pro potentially with two M1Xs in it or a Mac Pro with four M1Xs, then you've only got a smaller amount of efficiency cores 
stacking up. So you get a eight core efficiency and 32 performance core version for a four SOC stack, if that makes sense. Mikey Copeland asks, IK Vances, hi Dave, have you seen the new Sky Glass? For me, it's what Apple should have done for the living room TV years ago. So for anyone that doesn't know, Sky Glass is basically a TV set with Sky, which is a UK-like satellite TV company, but this appears to be cable only. Uh, they've basically made a 43-inch TV set that's got a streaming box basically built into it. The, the issue with that is that people quite often want to upgrade the brains of their TV and the panel they will keep for a long time. Also, if Apple was going to do it, they would want to put the, the most insane kind of panel in it that you've ever seen in your life. So the cost of that would also probably be prohibitive. So I understand where you're coming from, but I don't think it would have worked for Apple. The only thing I can think is if they do a larger kind of standalone display, they could build Apple TV functionality into it quite simply. Maybe that's what the A13 will do in the standalone display and uh, you'd be able to watch your stuff on it. That would be quite cool if you wanted to kind of separate it from a Mac, but most of the time it's gonna be something that you attach to your Mac. Tim Kinetics asks, I gave answers all the online Apple event hype seems focused on the M1X products. Do you think that there might still be some surprises in store from Cupertino next week? Something easier to keep secret, like software perhaps? Yeah, absolutely, and I've been talking about the possibility of new software for quite some time, I think, as well, especially when they were saying broadcasting from uh, Cupertino on that invite. Originally, Apple was going to be at the American Broadcasters Conference, I think it was called, in Las Vegas. A decade ago, that's where they released the last version of uh, Final Cut 10. So I've got a feeling that we are going to see upgraded Pro software all to go with these new Macs and to potentially tie in with the stuff that's come with the latest iPhones. The ability to edit spatial audio, all that kind of thing, I think is very likely to be coming at this event too. Abdullah Nasir asks, IK Vances, can M1X MacBooks have compatibility issues like we see with M1? Some apps were not working fine like Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, etc. So the thing with this is that this is now not the first of the architecture. So the compatibility issues that we had right at the beginning with M1 uh, was basically because people hadn't updated their apps to support the Apple Silicon ARM architecture that Apple's using now. Any apps that were updated for M1 will automatically work straight away with M1X. It's the same architecture. There's no difference in the code that needs to be used. It will simply work. Anything that was running under Rosetta before will still work because it's still running under Rosetta. Anything that didn't run at all, it's still waiting for the developers to update it. But anything that works on your M1 Max will work on M1X out of the gate, zero issues. Lit8 asks, IK Vances beat Studio Buds versus AirPods 3 versus AirPods 2 versus AirPods 1 versus AirPods Pro. And I'm a little bit disappointed that you're uh, excluding AirPods Max there, but that's fine. I think we're looking at in-ear stuff here. So the Studio Buds have got some nice little uh, features to them. Um, the smaller design for one thing, which we think we're going to see in the next version of the AirPods Pro. But the audio on them, when you do calls is apparently pretty ropey so they're not as great for that they also miss out on things like the automatic switching between different devices and that kind of thing so that's kind of where the studio buds sits airpods 3 we don't really know what they're going to be yet so it's very difficult to compare them to anything else although we think they're going to get a redesign that looks a lot more like the airpods 2 uh, the airpods 2 versus the airpods 1 was purely a slight difference in the internal chips no difference in features but paired quicker um I think maybe Hey Siri was added for the um, AirPods Generation 2. I'm not sure if they were on the first generation. I've never had those. AirPods Pro, at the moment, still the best if you want in-ear stuff. They've got the uh, noise cancelling. They've got beamforming microphones. They've got the spatial audio. They've got the noise cancellation. They're great if you want anything in-ear. And you can get them super cheap at the minute on Amazon. And that's it for this show, guys. Don't expect to see the studio looking like this ever again. We are going to be ripping it apart. Bit of new colour. Try and tidy the whole thing up. Hopefully it's going to look pretty good, even though I don't have any flat surfaces in this room. So um, it's a tricky one, but we're going to make the best of it. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on Monday, if not before, for the event pre-hype.